Hello, and welcome to coverage of the EDB's flight test of the DB-6, nicknamed the Lance. And uh, the Lance will attempt to reach space. A space here being defined as the 100 km Karman line, uh, which is traditionally used to define where the boundary of space begins. And the pilot for this, this uh, attempt will be Chadvin Kerman, who is... Uh, who is most famous for flying the DB-1 to supersonic speeds past Mach 2 and he is the most experienced pilot for the EDB aerospace division and so it was natural for him to be the choice for this mission. This is the most complicated aircraft designed by the EDB thus far but also one of the lightest it is it has half the mass of the DB-4 or DB-5, as we just hear uh, Chad Vinkerman saying that he's ready to go here. And we'll give more details about the aircraft after takeoff. Because of the lightness of the aircraft and uh, its efficiency, it in fact uh, has a fairly low takeoff speed of about 90 meters per second. However, because of the low thrust of its uh, uh, J-85 turbojets, each uh, generating 20 kilonewtons, it requires a boost from these from these rockets, the SRBs, to lift off. It is possible to lift off without the SRBs, but there is some concern that if that was attempted, it would uh, scrape the RL-10 off the tail. The SRBs only generate uh, 1.35 kilonewtons apiece. There are four of them, and they burn for 10 seconds, as you saw there. The main rocket engine for this is the RL-10B2, an upgraded version of the RL-10A3 used in the DB-1 for uh, Chad Vinkerman's initial mission. Aside from those, there are also uh, one kilonewton thrusters. The one kilonewton thrusters are used to settle the fuel down in preparation for re-entry and uh, the re-entry requires a uh, retro burn using the RL-10 so the RL-10 must re-fire at that point. So that's why the one kilonewton thrusters as well as RCS thrusters for maneuvering. So quite a number of different systems on this aircraft. Right now the J-85s from General Electric are bringing the aircraft to six uh, kilometers or roughly uh, 20,000 feet and, and once uh, Chavin gets it to that altitude they will be ready to ready to light the RL-10. Of course it's not efficient to light the RL-10 at sea level. Its sea level ISP is 235 whereas its vacuum ISP is almost double that at 462. So uh, here we go. Uh, Chapman deliberately uh, went out for a little bit before beginning his turn. He's uh, turning a full 180 degrees back towards the, uh, the Air Force Base Vandenberg. And this is part of the many ways that the EDB has decided to mitigate the, the problem of uh, going too far afield and uh, losing the ability to return. And uh, another way is that uh, the DB-6 will essentially burn straight up and uh, the RL-10's retro burn, once it uh, comes back down, uh, will uh, kill the horizontal velocity away from the base and uh, will actually generate the horizontal velocity towards the base. As we see here, the DB-6 uh, passing by Vandenberg Air Force Base again. We won't be reading out too much telemetry data as we will rely on the in-cockpit views for most of that. But at this point, uh, Chapman Kerman is approximately uh, 3 kilometers in altitude, 139 meters per second in velocity. And if we could see the view there, 137 it reads there, uh, 3.8 kilometers in altitude now. He'll hold steady about 139 to 136 at minimum all the way up. Certainly these jets are not going to be able to push him much faster than that. Not while it's fully fueled. On the way back, however, the jets could easily push it beyond 
beyond uh, the speed of sound as right now the mass of the aircraft is 7.55 tons uh, but empty it's only 2.6 so uh, quite a big difference there and uh, its uh, thrust weight ratio right now with just the jets is uh, 0.54 but afterwards it will be quite a bit different and uh, so that is part of the calculation that has gone on around here at the lighting at the lighting of the RL10 the thrust weight ratio with the rocket is 1.6 more than 1.6 the maximum thrust weight ratio during the entire mission will be 4.3 the RL10's total burn time is 2 minutes and 55 seconds but part of that is the retro burn we expect that it will uh, burn to space for about 2 minutes Uh, we're pretty much set to go here, approaching the designated altitude. Chadwin is now ready to go, and yes, he, he has lit the RL-10. And he has turned off the jets. The jets uh, are only uh, capable of going up to uh, Mach 2 before overheating. And since they only have uh, the minimum amount of fuel with them, it was better to simply turn them off at this point and conserve the fuel for the return back. As you can see, the pitch up angle is basically uh, 70 degrees or so here as uh, most of the velocity is turned vertical, 250 meters per second in total velocity, uh, velocity but about 240 of that vertical. And that is gaining quite quickly now. We've seen good stability throughout the flight so far during the turn, very stable. Here in the up angle, uh, very stable as well. 390 certainly past the speed of sound now we see 24 kilometers 25 he's easily passing the record set by the EDB in previous flights and there with 30 kilometers now for a self-launched aircraft, he's got that record. Continuing straight up here. Still gaining quite a bit of horizontal velocity, as we'll soon see. You can see there 860 meters per second vertical, but still 400 horizontal. Approaching 500 now. He's turned off. He's turned off the RL-10 now, and so now it is coasting to apoapsis. Forward velocity about 530 meters per second. Uh, vertical velocity uh, 996 meters per second at the time of shutdown. Uh, total velocity 1.1 kilometers per second now decreasing as it loses its vertical velocity being pulled down being pulled down by gravity decelerated by gravity here okay uh, Chapman Kerman is now making his turn using the RCS as well as reaction wheel power in his pod and he has completed the turn so now he is oriented with his uh, tail facing his current velocity vector as he passes 97 kilometers now, 98, 99, and we have 100 kilometers. Javin Kerman reports that he has over 100 kilometers. Mission Control confirms that uh, he is in space. We expect him to play around with the the zero gravity as he reaches his apoapsis. See various views here. 
Still coasting up uh, 110 kilometers. Okay. Vertical speed dropping now. Still 530 meters per second in horizontal speed there. And he's reached Apoapsis, uh, 111 kilometers. Headed back down now. He's still got about 50 seconds left of rocket fuel, uh, liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen in this case. He's ignited the one kilonewton thrusters in order to settle the fuel in the RL-10. And the RL-10 is lit. So now he's killing his uh, velocity, both his uh, vertical and his horizontal now. He will attempt to gain some velocity towards the Vandenberg Air Force Base. So he's basically uh, turning his velocity vector around here. This is of course much better than attempting to make a very wide turn in the atmosphere. And now he's gaining horizontal speed. We expect him to turn off the rocket. Yes, he has. He ended up gaining some vertical speed, but he's losing that quickly now. And horizontal speed is good, uh, going past uh, the speed of sound. Of course, uh, once, the, once the force of gravity gets a hold of him again, well, it's been having hold on him all the way through, but it is going to accelerate him quite quickly. And we expect uh, velocities well in excess of Mach 3, going straight down. As now uh, he is essentially a brick falling into the atmosphere. He has, of course, uh, some aerodynamic uh, benefits. Uh, he will be able to slow down using those wings and uh, control his descent, but at a certain point uh, he will eventually lose the ability to uh, maintain attitude control. Looks like he is igniting the one kilonewton thrusters again, which means he plans to fire the RL-10s to decelerate a little bit more. RL-10, of course. Got speed break up. Losing attitude. He's uh, ignited the RL 10 to maintain attitude. He'll probably empty the fuel now, trying to keep his nose up as long as possible. Horizontal speed past Mach 2.5, vertical speed quite high, total speed is uh, 1.1 kilometers a second, which is uh, about, about Mach 4 now. And he does not have attitude control, so now it's all aerodynamics. He's going to slowly bring it towards Vandenberg Air Force Base, and uh, slowly, very slowly, pull the nose up. This aircraft is not built to uh, maneuver at uh, speeds higher than Mach 2.3, so all care must be taken with uh, trying to turn it here, as uh, otherwise the wings will simply rip off. It's not so much the wings actually, it's the forward canards, the all moving canards. Those in particular are vulnerable to uh, being ripped off in the atmosphere at high speeds. Chavin reports that it's handling quite well and uh, he's got the runway in sight. He's, uh, he's got, uh, he'll have to adjust his heading a bit, but looks like uh, he's well on his way back home here as uh, Chavin Grumman, the first uh, Kerbal to take an aircraft into space over Earth, into what is defined as space, uh, 100 kilometers above the surface. 
And here he has ignited his jets. So uh, he's got a uh, cruising attitude here. He's leveled off. Looking good. Still quite tense, of course. Nobody's taking anything for granted here in Mission Control. Still very high. To make sure he has enough fuel, uh, we would expect Chab and Kerman to make a very steep descent to the runway. He wasn't carrying much kerosene to begin with for the for the J85s. In fact, the total mass of the two tanks, uh, the each of the tanks feeding the J85s, is only. Uh, 300 kilograms, carrying around 355 liters of kerosene. Quite minimal, only a few minutes worth. Though those uh, few minutes can be stretched out at high altitude where there's greater fuel efficiency. Decelerating now, and uh, he's getting himself lined up. Uh, velocities 260 meters per second. That's that's about uh, airliner velocities here. Around Mach uh, 0.8 to 0.9. Speed breaks out. And of course, uh, this is where Chad Van Kerman's uh, great experience comes into play. We are eager to see him back down, and of course, he has uh, proven himself capable of dealing with uh, the unique intricacies of the runway here. In theory, Chavin has uh, already tackled the tough part in the loss of control on uh, re-entry. That loss of control was the most difficult part of the entire flight, and uh, the part where potentially things could go horribly wrong. But but we know the the runway here at base is uh, is not entirely safe. So we'll have to see how he does now. Still, still grave concern. And uh, everybody wishing Chab and Kerman well. As we now see him below the cloud cover, below 7 kilometers, descending soon below 6. Speed breaks out again. Touchdown speed should be uh, right around 90 to 100 meters per second. Now that the altitude record has been set, there is the issue of the speed record. And uh, of course, the DB6 has already uh, surpassed any speed that we have seen in previous DB flights uh, for the EDB Aerospace Division. Uh, well, in excess of uh, Mach 4 and even probably Mach 5. Uh, which is uh, difficult uh, because we have to check out uh, where the velocities were actually hit at what altitude. But it definitely had Mach 4 and so in horizontal flight it should be able to do much more than that. So we'll see but uh, there is the difficulty of bringing it back to base safely. Uh, potentially the goal will be to simply use the RL-10 in horizontal flight, shut it down and uh, do some sort of retro burn like it did, uh, flipping the aircraft around. But uh, the question is what altitude that can be done safely at uh, without breaking the aircraft apart at those high speeds. Uh, probably it would have to be done at a fairly high altitude to avoid aerodynamic failure. So that all has to be taken into account and tested before 
putting a Kerbal in the plane and sending him up. Okay, uh, Chapman Kerman reporting that he is on final approach, lining up here. Under two kilometers, actually coming in quite low compared to expectations. A very cautious approach, uh, contrary to the initial plan. Fairly slow, uh, coming in at around uh, 350 miles an hour, slightly below 350 miles an hour now. Though he's maintaining that speed for for quite a while, so uh, maybe a little bit fast here for this plane. For one of the other planes with the widely spaced landing gear, it would not be a problem. But uh, the landing gear for the DB6 is narrowly spaced, and of course that adds additional concern as we see the landing gear lower there. A very narrowly spaced landing gear. High potential for tipping over. Of course, there was no way to avoid that. Uh, there was no no position on the wings, as the wings are very lightweight and unencumbered. They're coming in a bit high here. That's unexpected considering the approach. Okay, coming in now. Touching down. Okay, we have touched down. The vertical speed on the touchdown was 4.4 meters per second. Uh, the horizontal speed 108 meters per second, a bit fast. And uh, we're worried that he doesn't have enough runway here, running out of runway here. Uh, he's trying to break as, uh, oh, uh, we've got tipping. And uh, we just hope he doesn't blow up at this point. Uh, ah. Okay, it would seem like he's settled down there, and he cannot, uh, he cannot flip it over. He's trying to, but can't. Uh, okay, trying to uh, retract the landing gear and extend again. Uh, ah. Well, on the bright side, that could have gone uh, much worse than it did, and uh, nothing blew up. Uh, looks like, uh, in fact, it's quite convenient for uh, Chad and Kerman to get out now. And yes, uh, no land a ladder necessary, Chad and Kerman. Uh, facing a certain amount of crack in there, uh, clearly negative crack in. And, uh, and yeah. He'll check the plane out as uh, as well. well. We'll leave him to that. I uh, don't know what to say about this particular ending to the flight, uh, except that it was a successful flight. The plane uh, touched down safely. Uh, no uh, parts were destroyed, and the plane did its duty. It managed to reach space uh, above 100 kilometers, indeed 111 kilometers, with uh, plenty of fuel to spare actually probably and uh, so the Lance uh, successful in bringing a Kerbal into space for the first time in a self-launched aircraft the uh, first time we've seen that around Earth breaking all the records of course uh, though uh, no no uh, no great photo shoot for uh, Chavin it looks like as uh, he he can barely make himself visible above the ground uh, with that though Thank you for watching this coverage of the DB6 test flight and we hope you'll join us for future EDB aerospace adventures and with that this is the EDB signing off.